and welcome. Hello and welcome. <laughs> it is Tuesday at 10 -ish. ish. I am Danny Flynn. I am a doTERRA US founder 2.0 and a platinum leader. And I've been at this game for about six years now. It's been great. I'm being joined by my girl, Dr. Ashley Anderson. Tell the people who you are. <laughs> you did already. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them um, who I'm, you are. <laughs> Dr. Ashley Anderson. I'm a women's health nurse practitioner. Uh, I've also been using the oil for uh, almost, it'll be nine years in September. Um, but I've been doing this as a business since... COVID year. So July of 2024 to, or 2020 to be exact. Um, also US founder 2.0 and whoop. of all things natural. I'm super excited about what we're talking about today because y'all don't be acting right <laughs> when it comes to the stress management. <laughs> I'm, I'm excited to have this conversation with a professional. Because I, well, I'm serious, Dr. Ashley Anderson. People don't, you know, people need to hear a person's credentials. I feel like sometimes, sometimes we need to hear a person's credentials before we can like really receive what they're saying. Um, mm -hmm. And I feel like so many people in healthcare, in my opinion, in my experience, they don't, um, they don't talk about this enough about Probably how- Probably because they're also really stressed and they're not managing it well. <laughs> Well, there you have it. There you have it. Um, mm -hmm. There you have it. I had one doctor who gave me um, a breathing technique to do to help manage stress and anxiety. Mm -hmm. And I had so much respect for him because he didn't, he wasn't quick to prescribe me a pill. It was like, let me see how we can help to manage this naturally. And that's what we want to talk about today, because there are lots of ways to, to manage it, na it naturally. Um, so yeah, what are you thinking, doc? Well, I was thinking that we probably should just start talking about what stress does to the body. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, you know, I think that to some extent, you know, stress is normal, but I think the extent to which, <clears throat> excuse me, it's been normalized in this country is not healthy. Mm -hmm. You know, I think we, we do the whole, um, just live life chronically stressed, live and sleep when you die type of thing. But we have to realize what that's doing to us. So made a list Let's of all the things stress does to our body. Also, let me say, let me go back and say, our bodies are designed with this whole, you all heard the fight or flight mechanism, right? right. So that's, you know, if we're being chased by a bear, running for our lives. Like they're supposed to be in short stints where these hormones are released <clears throat> for our bodies to be able to save ourselves. We were never intended to manage that level of stress hormone every single day, right. all day. So what it does, we're going to start with the psychological conditions. Um, anxiety, depression. Those are two of the top ones. You know, sometimes we're really quick to say, oh, there's some sort of chemical imbalance. That's possible. But majority of the time, it's related to stress. Mm. Um, poor memory. That's another thing where we always are like, I have focus issues or I have ADHD or whatever. You probably just stressed out. Granted, there are clinical diagnoses where that is a thing. I don't want anyone to hear me say that, you know, I'm un undermining or kind of like saying that's not a big deal. It is. And some people are chemically made, genetically made with different brain misfirings that cause ADD and ADHD. So that's a thing. But the larger majority of people who are having issues with memory and focus are because they're stressed or they're not getting enough sleep. And I would argue that even if you have like a predisposition or ADHD or something else, it's just exasperated by exasperate. Ex it's made worse. Yes, by I knew where you were going. <laughs> yes, it's made worse by stress, uh, mismanaged or unmanaged stress. I would imagine. Hundred percent. Yeah. Yes, that is a thing. All right, immunity. Of course, we know our immune system goes down when you're stressed. You tend to get sick uh, more frequent. 
And also, we also tend to see exacerbations in autoimmune conditions. Mm. Um, and, you know, some of that is diet and all those things, which also like roll into stress. But um, that is one of the big things. And other physical conditions, hypertension or high blood pressure, heart disease, mm. stroke, mm. weight gain and obesity, mm. diabetes, mm. arthritis. Mm. Digestive issues, <laughs> headaches and migraines, mm -hmm. muscle tension, pain in general, yeah, and sleep issues. You know, they said that 70% of folks who are not able to sleep are unable to sleep because they are stressed out. Yeah. And Can't I turn the brains off at night. Yeah. Th those, those last ones that you hit, uh, high blood pressure, uh, diabetes, um, heart issues. There was a number of heart disease. What was the, so there were a couple others in there. Um, obesity, muscle tension, pain, obesity, yeah. arthritis, oh, arthritis. Like these are when you now, obviously these can impact anybody anywhere, but what I think of some of we've, we've read these numbers many times. I'm sure you've, you've seen them even more than me, but like when you look at, at people in the U S uh, African-American people are the sickest in this country. And when you look at those last few things that you, you read off, that's, these are the things that plague our culture. And mm -hmm. I just believe that stress and, and not managing it properly has, is, is, is such a, plays such a large role in it. I'm not saying that there aren't things that are hereditary. I think more than what's in your genetic code though, what is hereditary is lifestyle choices it's mm -hmm. how we ignore problems and we don't deal with things. We don't want to talk about stuff. Mental health is not something that's discussed in the Black community. And so it, there is a direct correlation between that and all of these other health issues. And, mm -hmm. you know, I think both of us, we don't want to oversimplify it, but right. we also don't want to underestimate the power of being in tune with your emotional and, and mental health needs and learning how to to manage stress and there's so many ways that you can do that and then everything else you you will see an improvement across the board I'm not saying it's going to alleviate sure. every other issue right <clears throat> mm -hmm. that's a big old check in the boxes yeah because if you think about it um it, it's really like almost a snowball effect what were you gonna say no i that terminology i just used at the end wasn't right but go proceed oh <laughs> y'all are following <laughs> yeah we got you um but it's a, it really is a snowball effect because when you're stressed, you're not sleeping well or you're not getting restful sleep, even if you're getting the hours. So then when you're awake, your brain is not as it's not functioning at its fullest capacity. Right. You're not going to be as productive, which is going to make you stressed and anxious. You're probably not making the best choices about your nutrition. You're probably too tired to exercise, which is what you need. Um, there's layers to that which ultimately over time ends up with those things that we talked about so it's like this is almost it's like root cause right root cause analysis why are we feeling the way we're feeling some things you know could be like you said gene genetically predisposed to xyz but some things are just we need to manage our bodies better manage the stress that we're dealing with um so i'm curious danny flynn <laughs> talk to me about your strategies how how do you manage your stress what things are you using like what's your routine yeah so it's a good question I think out of between the two of us my um you probably do a better job <laughs> I am I think I, <laughs> I think I am predisposed to song like I am just very intense <laughs> I um am very easily like triggered. I'm, I'm stressed out often. And pre doTERRA, it had me on blood pressure medicine when I was like 32. Um, and it, it really, I think, and I, and I hope, you know, this is received well, but I feel like sometimes we, um, or at least myself, I'll talk about myself, the previous version of me, you know, you I would say things like my job is stressing me out or you are stressing me out or this situation is stressing me out. But I'm really focused now on inward, 
which is no, nobody gets to do that. Mm -hmm. No, nobody gets to stress me out. That's an inside job. I, mm -hmm. I can control that. And this is something that I'm actively working on. Like no situation, then it makes, cause it, if you, if it's all these circumstances and all these other people that are making you feel this way, then you become a victim mm -hmm. and you're out, of control. you're out of control. And it's this woe is me mentality. And then you, you, yes, accountability. Exactly. You can become more accountable for your own actions when you, when you see it as no, it's up to me to manage my stress myself. And so that's the season that I'm in right now. Um, and so I'm, it's an, for me, it's something that I will always, I will likely always have to work on and keep top of mind every single day, every Cause single human. day. Cause I'm human and I, and I'm a little, I'm a wired a little, a little more intensely than I think some, I have some of my friends are just so chill and I'm like, how, how are you just rolling through life? like that. Now I will tell you that the intensity, um, I don't even know. I don't know how to describe it. Maybe Dr. Ashley, maybe you can tell me what, what it is, <laughs> <laughs> but like this, the way that I'm wired, it does produce results. If you want to get something done, give it to me. It's going to get handled. Right. Um, so I appreciate this side of me, but I, it's got to be balanced. It has to be balanced. Yes. And that's, that's really what I'm working on. So the first thing that you need to know about me is I don't play with my supplement routine. I mm -hmm. don't care what anybody says. I don't care how much I have to spend. I don't care. It's what it, are you it, taking? Tell it, us. It's keeping me together. So um lifelong vitality is a non-negotiable every mm -hmm. single day. I take double the um omegas just for mental health to really calm kind of kind of the calm the brain down a little bit. Um Adaptive is something that I do day every single day as soon as it came out as a part of my day. So I, I rely on the pills, the adaptive mm -hmm. capsules. I take them at night before I go to bed. So mm -hmm. at night, um, because I'm an anxious sleeper, so I take uh adaptive capsule, copaiba, two at least two copaiba soft gels and um a serenity pill at night. That's my nighttime routine. It helps me sleep, it cal calms my brain, but it also helps me manage stress, right? Because sleep is so important to managing stress for for me and for for most people, um, mm -hmm. I have to do all the things, like check all the boxes. But my um, my supplement game is on point because it it really really helps me. Balance is an oil that I have in my life, and then I've that was my first oil that I fell in love with with DoTerra. I use it on the bottom of the feet, focus on the big toes day in and day out day out. Um, that is really very grounding. And for someone like me, I need to always be grounded. So I do that um, to help manage stress. And then I just, I always have adaptive with me. Shinrin Yoku is one of my favorite oils now. So when mm -hmm. I feel myself starting to get like worked up, I will, I just do some oils in my hand and I breathe in deep. Um, who was that? Veronica and I were chat, had a little chat this morning. Um, I, I have a, I have a, a very strong faith. And I lean really into that um, because, you know, that's the, there's a scripture that talks about the peace of God. It's mm -hmm. a real thing. It's a real thing. So I really, really, really lean heavily into him. Um, so my spiritual routine is just about as on point as my supplement game. Right. Um, and lately, this was inspired by you, Dr. Ashley. Lately, I have been, when I wake up in the morning, I never, this is so odd. I don't know why I've never used my oils while I'm praying. It, I just never even thought about it, but that's how I'm starting my day with frankincense or balance. And I just talk to my God and I put it all out there and I let him know how I'm feeling, how I feel about the day that I have. I pray for balance. I pray to just be chillax, right? To get it done. Cause I got to get things done, but also to do it in balance and to make sure that the most important things stay the most important things. And so again, I think that's it. And then the other thing is I have to move my body. I have to, if I don't, I feel it. I got to get to bed on time. I got to eat right. If I don't, I feel it. And I could like, I'm filtered here on zoom. I am not filtered on Instagram. And I see what happens when I'm off my routine mm -hmm. for a couple of days. I can see it all in my face. So um, you're right, Mikey, saying that's exactly how our ancestors prayed. Yeah, they surely did. And there's there's scripture 
that talks about how how God loves the smell of frankincense. So when I pray, I'm like, let me let me use a little something you might like, you know, mm-hmm. just make me feel more connected and more in tune and more grounded. And when I feel um, the stress rising, whether it has life or work or whatever, the go to is prayer to just kind of bring me bring me down. So that's that's how I I do it. There's Veronica. Hey, girl. We had this whole conversation this morning. Um, so yeah, what about you? Well, honey, that was a lot. That was good. Girl, it's serious business. <laughs> that was <over>. good. <laughs> so layers. There's layers, I think. Um, you know, first for me, waking up is the morning routine. If you all missed that uh, live, go back and watch the, the morning routine recording because that's so important. So for me, I start our morning routine with cedarwood. King Solomon's oil. I need to be wise. Mm. <laughs> I, need, I need mental clarity and focus and all the things. So that's what I use for my meditation. As soon as I get out of bed, um, I go straight to my devotional. Then I write in my uh, prayer journal and um, typically read something, whatever book that I'm reading. So it's like starting my day grounding helps me manage the stress throughout the day even more. So um, once I'm up and moving, frankincense, like you mentioned, um, like I started using it for a whole nother gynecology type of issue, but um, I take two drops every morning, every night, just to help ground my body to calm. If you think about like the tree resin oils, Mm -hmm. like the trees are held steady. They're so big and heavy, right? They're held steady by the roots. So that's what the grounding oils do for us. They help us to stay, you know, grounded in who we are, who our creators made us to be and like stay in our purpose. So that's why I love to start my day with a couple drops of frankincense under the tongue. Keep it moving. Mm -hmm. Um, Adaptive is definitely a heavy part of my um, supplement routine, lifelong vitality, Copai Eba. Mm-hmm. So for the O's not familiar, Copaiba is a natural anti-inflammatory agent, which I'd use for double, right? for all those old basketball injuries and inflammation and such. But it also is a nervous system relaxant. Um, it's a cousin of CBD. So I always like to tell people. I like that. Um, <laughs> so I love to take that twice a day. Um, but that helps me also to stay calm. Sometimes when I find that I'm really worked up or there's like a lot of things going on, I'm more stressed than normal. I'll take Serenity, mm-hmm. the Serenity soft gels during the day a couple of times. So um, movement is also huge for me. Like that is something that I had to make myself invest in, you know, as an athlete, it's like you finish your sport and you don't have someone yelling at you anymore. <laughs> to do the things so um you know that became an issue but I find that as I'm more active I'm less stressed Mm -hmm. like I have this release like someplace to to get it out so movement is huge um I think therapy is huge Mm. as well because sometimes you just like we all wear so many different hats that in it, it sometimes there you don't have a, an unbiased space to like release mm-hmm. um, and, you know, work with coping mechanisms, like you mentioned that your doctor gave you. So I'm a huge advocate of talk therapy. Um, the other thing that I have added to my regimen over the past three months or so is um, emotional healing work. Mm-hmm. Well, I've been doing it in a different way in the past, but after going through the essential emotions training, shout out to Veronica, who's on here. You already shouted her out, but um, she's done three sessions for me. And we did one where we got to, she did one on me and I did one on her, which we are due, by the way, I'm going to text you. (laughs) But that has been amazing too, because um, it really helps you to identify emotions that are deep rooted and sometimes are causing you different problems in your life showing up in ways that you would never even recognize Mm -hmm. so that that has been a huge part of my stress management um you know just awareness of what are the things that I'm working through what are the the ways that I'm struggling like to call them out couple in oil with it and use that with affirmation to 
you know, get through the day. Cause you know, I think sometimes we're like, we do our stress management routine and then we expect it to go away. And that's not life, right? It's going to come back and it's going to hit you again, but it's like, how are you, like what you were, were talking about earlier is like, how are you managing it? How are you responding to the stressors that pop into your life? We can't live life expecting to never be stressed. The Bible tells us that's not real life either. No. So, you know, we have to be equipped and use the resources that we have. My preference is to do that naturally um, as things go crazy during the day. So that's kind of my routine. But the things that I keep on my person for those moments when things go awry, adaptive, I keep frankincense with me, um, console is a real yeah. good one that I love to keep next to me. Mm -hmm. Um Shinra Nyoku, of course, is high up on the list. Cedarwood, of course, stays in, in the case. <laughs> um, we think, are there any others? Balance, Midnight Forest, Ooh. Northern Escape. I love to pair a woodsy oil or blend with lavender. Oh. It just does something to me. I just love I'm it. So that. I'll do like northern escape with lavender or frankincense and lavender cedar wood and lavender those are some of my favorites but it just gives me this good comforting and grounding feeling that helps me push yeah. through the day without making me feel like I need to go to sleep yeah no that's good you you used the word grounding that's that's something that um COVID actually brought this to to light I mean Mm -hmm. This isn't rocket science, what I'm about to say, but for me, it was like, oh, I didn't know this was good. Um, actually grounding, <laughs> actually for me, being in nature is so peaceful, so stress relieving, even mm -hmm. just, it could be quick, just a quick walk around the block. And I don't, I don't necessarily live in the most beautiful neighborhood, but we've got these big, huge trees and the birds are just like, Di -di 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 -di. hey girl. <laughs> <laughs> just taking a moment to observe creation. I used to mm -hmm. always just like crave the beach, like crave the beach. Mm -hmm. um, and I realized, no, it's actually not the beach. It is the beach. I love the beach. Don't, don't get me wrong. It's creation. It's nature. It's being in mm -hmm. it. Wh whether it's in my little itty bitty backyard, that's literally like this big um, or <laughs> in a park, in a, in a forest. Like we went uh, when I went to Pennsylvania to see the birch trees we were in the in the thick of the forest and it just something about that for me you just I, you know I just felt so connected to God and just it, that is so relaxing and de-stress well, there's science behind that too exactly you I mean, know like the forest bathers mm -hmm. you know there's all of the things that the trees and, and nature are breathing out that we're breathing in physically does things to us it physically helps to lower our blood pressure and our heart rate and just to make us feel more grounded yeah. <laughs> that's the thing so it makes sense why people say get outside get your feet in the dirt ground yourself yeah. um those things actually do things chemically to our bodies that make us feel better and it's so better yeah. it's it's and it, these are simple things i hope you guys see this these are like simple things um i i will say this um you know, I spent 20 years in corporate America in a very high stress environment. Let me let me restate that in, a, in, a, in an environment that I, I allowed to really stress me out. <clears throat> um, and I knew it was bad. I knew how I felt. I didn't know how to address it. And I didn't feel like I had time, like the time to really figure things out. And I think this is what the entrepreneurship does is it really makes you reflect on you because if you're mm -hmm. if your business is not successful is if you're not hitting the goals you're not doing the things that you know you want to do or expect to do it's always you it's it's literally you have to pick up a mirror and look at yourself it's always you right yeah. it's it's you <laughs> and so i feel like this business has been this huge mirror for me and it's allowed me, I've had, I have an amazing mentor who's, who's like just a few years ahead of me with all this stuff. So she's worked through a lot of things and she's really helped me to observe, like stop, take a moment and observe like your patterns, how you are in some of the things or how you are in all of the things. And I start to see this really strong recurring 
pattern of how I manage stress and um, just a number of other of other things. And it's like, no, I if I want to be successful over here, it's I got to work on this. And guess what? It's going to equate to success across the board. And I see that. I see that happening as my as I started to get things together in one area of my life, other areas start to fall in place and, and prioritizing me and my needs is essential is essential it's like boundary setting that's one it of the is. things that i wrote down when you were talking yes. it's very important check this now i think you know dr ashley anderson i think it's easy relatively easy for someone like me i have no children i have a very easy husband he's he doesn't he's not a husband that has a lot of demands he's real chill he's not as chill as he says he is but he's he's chill <laughs> he's easy you know he's easy easy to get along with easy to easy to be with um and I mean, I set that, I set my life up intentionally like that because I knew how prone to stress I was. I, I, I am fascinated by people who can keep other people alive. So parents, and that means parents, <laughs> you, you getting up, you keeping yourself together and there are dependents and people that are like, mommy, mommy, mommy. Like I am fascinated by that. I don't know how you do it. So as a, as a mom, how do you balance all those things and still take care of yourself? It's hard. <laughs> I think the natural, your natural instinct is to sacrifice all for them. Mm -hmm. Right. And sometimes you will go to that extreme where it's like anything to make sure that they are well and happy and nourished and all the things nurtured that you will sacrifice yourself and mental health and physical health. Um, in the process. And that's something I've learned in the last three years is that if I'm unable to show up for them at my as my best self, I'm doing them a disservice. You know, one of my biggest prayers is for God to allow me to be the mom that they need mm -hmm. to get them to their path that they've been called to. And so I realized that that means I have to do better about taking care of me. Mm -hmm. So for me, what I try my best to do is manage my mornings. So I have to get up before they get up mm -hmm. to have that peace and quiet for my morning routine. Because once I hear those feet come down the hallway, it's over. <laughs> it's over. I have tried to be like, oh, they're eating breakfast. Let me go hide in the laundry room and do my meditation. And they're like, mommy, where are you? <laughs> like, it's done. So yeah. um the mornings and my evenings mm -hmm. are like off limits. Like I try to create space to wind down in the evening once they go to bed. Um, and then giving myself freedom for timeouts during the day, mm -hmm. you know, because, and that's one of the things I have on my list of like five suggestions that I would give to people to help manage their stress is sometimes just, you just have to be aware when you're at that point where you're like, I'm about to lose it. Mm -hmm. Somebody's about to get their head bitten off. Like I'm, you know, breathing, sighing deeply and mm -hmm. I need to take a moment. So creating space in your schedule for those timeouts, like as needed, like mm -hmm. giving yourself the authority to say, I know I'm in the middle of working on this thing, but I'm really struggling right now. I'm going to turn off the computer, maybe play a meditation, close my door, grab an oil or whatever you need to do, or take a, a stroll around the block or something just to recalibrate and get yourself centered um, to continue on. And that's one of the things that I have to constantly remind myself, like it is okay for you to take a time out and you yeah. deserve that. You've earned it. Go. Yes. Mm -hmm. You need it. Yeah. You need it. You need right. it. We are not machines. My my mentor, she always told me, you're a human being, not a human doing. Well. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That echoes in my ear often. Yeah. Oh no, I love that. I had to write that. I gotta write that down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I yeah, it's this culture we we live in in this in, in the US that's just got us wired to think we just got to go, 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 go with this intensity. Mm -hmm. And it's, um, it, it's, it's causing issues with our health. And yes. so, you know, it has to be prioritized. So I just, 
kudos to all of you who are joining us today, who are making time out of your schedule to figure this thing out because it is mm -hmm. figure outable. You know, mm -hmm. there's things that we can do that are, are relatively easy to, to start incorporating. I love it. So you have a list of five things you said? Yeah, I think there's six now. Let's, so, Let's just do a quick recap. Just add a few. Um, so first is the morning routine. Mm -hmm. I literally, I, I live by that and I swear by it. I think it's so extremely important for you to take at least 15 minutes when you start your day just for you. So you have to find what that series of activities or behaviors are that get you starting your day off grounded and calm and not stressed out about what to come. Um, but the morning routine is my number one suggestion, because I think the way you start the day is the way you will live your day. Oh. So if you start your day, alarm going off you're rolling out of the bed and you're running you will run until the day is over and you will crash at the end mm -hmm. so morning routine get in check second own your schedule and i don't care if you have a nine to five or if you're an entrepreneur you have to create boundaries for yourself meaning if you know that there's a certain time of day that normally stresses you out Give yourself a pocket of five to seven minutes before to do a quick meditation. Or if you know, <clears throat> excuse me, I have this meeting every Monday at 10 o'clock. And when it's over at 11, I'm frazzled. Don't book anything right afterwards. Give yourself a moment to get grounded and, and you know, de-stress from the moment. Like we cannot, we have to treat our bodies like we're human. So owning your schedule, giving yourself blocks of time to breathe, <laughs> to think, um, time for family, all the things that matter to you are most important, block those things out, um, and, and time for your mental and physical health. Mm -hmm. So exercise, like put it on a calendar. I think when you have a, a schedule, you are more likely to be less stressed. Um, and kind of as a part of that, unloading things out of your brain, so I kind of keep a continuous note of things to do when I'm like, oh, I might be in my Bible study writing in my journal. And, um, uh oh, sorry, my phone rang, I'll try to get it off. <laughs> but um, I might be in the middle of writing in my Bible journal or my prayer journal and something will pop in my head like, oh, you didn't do this or you need to do this. I'll like swipe over to my notes list, write it down and then get back to my things. So I think um, doing that at night, if you can, creating the things you need to do for the next day will also help to decrease your stress and also help you be able to sleep better. Mm -hmm. So number two is the schedule. Three, use your oils all day. So whether the grounding oils are better for you and your body or the other like lavender based ones like Serenity and Adaptive and Lavender itself, like the florals, find what works for you and use them consistently. And don't wait until you're in a crisis to apply them. Make them like your daily perfume, put them on, smell them. Even if you have to set an alarm, it's like apply these oils. Mm -hmm. do it so that you can consistently be in that space um where you feel good mm -hmm. timeouts i already mentioned that so that's number four but just um allowing space for timeouts during the day if you just need to sit outside by yourself if you need to read if you just need quiet take it and don't feel guilty about it mm -hmm unplugging that's something that I'm working on I actually like took a page out of the Danny Flynn book put in my phone and do not disturb <laughs> mm -hmm. so um yeah just being able to disconnect from work and life and social media and your laundry list of things that will not ever fully be complete it's like allowing yourself that free mental health space is very healthy mm -hmm. And uh, mental health days. Mm. So um, I think it's important to take days where you have nothing to do. That you get to do what or you want for that. Don't do nothing. <laughs> yeah, do nothing. Yeah, you choose not to do anything. Because let me go back and say, there's never days that we have nothing to do. There's always things to do. Um, 
but I used to try to do these on my kids' long days at school, like where they had, they went to the after school program. And sometimes it was, and I used to try to do one once a month where I would normally be at work, but I'm not. <laughs> and sometimes those days were lay in the bed and watch Netflix. Mm -hmm. Sometimes those days were cleaning up some things in my house I haven't had time for that were getting under my skin. Sometimes those days were like, I really need to catch up in this area. Mm -hmm. um, but it was what I wanted, not what was being asked of me. Mm -hmm. So I think those is very important to give yourself those moments. I have not had one in May. So well, you're due. And I feel like when you when I do that, I do that. I do it almost weekly, maybe like twice a, month, a couple of times a month. Um, like a whole day, a couple of times a month? I'll do a large percentage of the day, you know, mm -hmm. like I'll prioritize my household stuff, mm -hmm. but I'll just disconnect from work. And I figured out a couple of ways to do that in a healthy way so that I'm not like now I'm stressed the next day because I have all this stuff. Yeah. What I find is when I do it, um, I am literally like 10 times more productive the following day. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And I would just add to your list. Did you finish your list? Yeah, that was it. Okay, so I just want to add to the list. Okay, are you ready? The sigh. <laughs> because I feel like, I know I'm not the only one who feels like this, but like, you got to be real. Um, how do I want to, I think you got to give yourself some grace, right? So mm -hmm. it's, it's two-sided. It's give yourself some grace and also pay attention to yourself. <laughs> pay attention to your patterns. Pay attention to what you are naturally inclined to do. And try to work with her. What's happening? <laughs> it's a uh, rumba. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, pay attention to what you are naturally inclined to do and try to work with that as much as possible. And I think for me, that's how I landed in entrepreneurship. I could tell like this business, if you want me to be on from nine to five, and I just, I'm actually really good at 6 a.m. Mm-hmm. But you don't get that that in me because I got to be here from nine to five or maybe I crush it at 6 a.m. and still got to come in there. Now my day, you know, so pay attention to to you and what you're naturally inclined to do and then create a life, create a schedule that works with that, not against it. And I think yeah. that's how we, we I feel like so many of us, especially as women, probably even more so as mothers, it's like this, like it's got, I'm going to force myself to do this like. No, actually, maybe you don't. Maybe you'd be more productive if you listen and observe what you naturally do and then try to work with that. And I've been trying to do that too. And I think it really helps with stress management. Like, what am I resisting? Mm -hmm. Is And is there a reason why I'm resisting it? Is there something, a little small tweak here or there that I can do to um, to address that? And then also like, you know, like I said, we don't have any kids. We don't have any distractions here in this house. So my husband told me over the weekend, he had an observation about me that I was like, yo, that was like, I never noticed that about myself. He's like, yeah, you do it all the time. And I'm like, duly noted, that is a lack of, that's poor scheduling. And that's mm -hmm. a need to fix. So, you know, hopefully you have that relationship. Mm. I was going to say, and sometimes those like moments of dread Mm -hmm. are your body telling you that you're doing something that's not in your purpose? Yeah. I mean, you got to make sure you're doing, you're aligned, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're, you're aligned. <laughs> and I don't know. I think there's some certain things like I've noticed I have this tendency to get like real worked up over something um, that is really small, but I've made it this big thing, right. That does need to be done. It needs to be, the box needs to be checked. And it's like you, the more you, push it out. And now it really is this big thing when it really, it didn't have to be, had you done it, you know? So it's, it's really that. that yeah. It's <laughs> right? avoidance behavior. It's avoidance. Right. But I have to tell you, like, I don't know, like, I think I am so anti, like I was so traumatized. That's the word from my time in corporate and how I was and who I became that I, in this business, I have tried to be the exact opposite of that. And it's like, it's not, it's not practical. You, if you want to be successful, you have to have a schedule. You have to have 
you have to be regimented. Like you, you just have to, there's, there's just no athlete. There's no celebrity. There's no person that you look up to that's met all these goals. That's out here just chilling the days away. No, they will have a chill day and it might be on a yacht because they worked really, really hard to get there. Right. But they, they are regimented people. They are like clockwork. They, they move like clockwork and they also are respecting their bodies and doing and recovering and doing all the things so that they're able to show up in that way. And as entrepreneurs, you, we really do have to be the same way. And I, I have avoided that. And it's like at a point where it's like, Oh, okay. You see? let's, let's stop playing. Let's get her. Mm -hmm. But it all, yeah. I think it all kind of, I don't know. I feel like every conversation we have, we say the same things multiple times. And I hope that you guys hear that because it's a lifestyle. It, it mm -hmm. truly, all these things fit together like this. Yeah. It's a lifestyle. Yeah. <laughs> I love somebody in the chat said, stick to the schedule and also create boundaries. So you don't break the schedule. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I, in my head, it's like, okay, keep up so you don't have to catch up, right? Yeah. And part of that is just, and, and don't be like me. Like sometimes I'll be like, okay, today I'm going to do like this whole big long list. Now I'm starting to say, okay, but when are you going to do it? <laughs> Not just- Putting it on the calendar, days, yeah. But when are you going to, because you're setting yourself up to be stressed when you have this list of like 35 things and 24 hours. Mm -hmm. Like it's not practical, not even, you probably got like eight hours to work. So I've started, time blocking is really, really, really effective. I don't know if, if you guys do you time block. Yes, I do. And it's, it's very, very helpful. Yeah. Um, and I think just adding in there, this extra pin about protecting that time, you know, like yesterday, for example, I had blocked some time working on this book, writing, writing my mom calls and I'm like, I would normally answer and then I would be distracted and then my time is gone and then I'm frustrated because I didn't make any progress today, but I yeah. sent her to voicemail and I said, I'm writing. I'll call you later. Yeah. So you have to also be disciplined to protect the time that you set aside. For sure. Mm -hmm. If you don't respect your schedule, let me tell you something. Nobody else will. Not, a, this, not another other soul will. <laughs> <laughs> so... These are things that protect your peace, that help you um, relax and 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 ultimately helps with your yeah, And also, it's like, you know, if you know that every thing on that to-do list has a block of time to get done, you're not stressed and anxious wondering when you're going to get it done. Exactly, because you've already allocated it. Mm -hmm. So it's... It works. It works. I think just so often we try to to avoid it, especially in this business of doTERRA. We try to avoid it, but it's like, no, we love what we do, but it is a job. If you want it to, if, if it's a hobby, that's different. But if it's a job, then you have to treat it as, you know. If you want it to pay you like a job. If you want it to pay you like a job. Hello. You better show up and get her done. And uh, we have just really so good. many, so many, so many beautiful tools to help us with, with this and really be our best selves. So. I love it. I love it. I love it. Did we hit all the things? Yeah. Yeah. All the things on my list. Well, I hope you guys found this to be helpful. And mm. Usa. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you about Usa in a minute. Um, what I my ask of you guys, if you're hanging out with us on Zoom, we'll leave the Zoom chat. We'll leave it open for a few minutes and welcome some dialogue and conversation. We'd love to hear how, how you guys are doing it. If you're on um joining us on Insta, you can hop on over to Zoom for for a little round table convo if, if you want to for a few minutes. Um we are going into June and we have a couple of things on our list to talk about, but we would love to hear from you. Like, what do you want to hear? What's what's helpful for you or for your uh, customer base that you think would be helpful for us to discuss here? So let us know, send us a message and we will be sharing our June schedule really soon. So thank you for joining us on Instagram and uh, for all of you who watch the replay, we appreciate you. We love you. Okay, watch. Instagram. There it is. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Thanks for joining. And we'll see you guys next Tuesday at two ish. <laughs> 10 ish. Oh, <laughs> what? Next Tuesday at 10 ish. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. And thanks for watching the replay and joining us here on Zoom. Have a good day.